talk about Walk Like an Investor, the California Drought Shorting Opportunities. My estimate on this would be next year. Now, discussion of any QSIP for securities for discussion purposes only. Do not buy any security mentioned in this playlist unless you performed your due diligence. Note that I purchased shares of Lehman Brothers three days before a collapse, so anyone following me into a trade is taking excessive risk and may lose significant financial value. In addition, at the time of this video, I may or may not own shares of the company mentioned and may or may not have kept those shares depending on what circumstances changed. I'm also going to preface this by saying that I have contacted uh, journalists in California, the state government in California, the water people, um, I can't think of their names right now, but the water people in California, and I haven't gotten responses. So my point is, before I get into shorting opportunities, I have actually reached out because there are solutions that California could implement that residents in California wouldn't have to pay higher prices, nor would any American have to pay higher prices. But they don't seem to be really interested. So now it's, okay, how do you profit off of the drought? Okay, since nobody wants to pay attention, the next thing to think about is, well, how do you take money out of the pockets of California consumers since they want to ignore things? All right, a couple of years ago, I believe it was after the financial crisis, a lot of hedge funds actually jumped in the almond business because almonds are very water intensive and they're produced in California and a lot of them made a killing off of it. But these same hedge funds I would bet are looking at some of the stuff that I'll be looking at as well. So how long this will play out is difficult to know. I know they're not running out of water right now. They're claiming they are, but they're not because they're procrastinating. Procrastinators, when they actually run out of water, then you'll know because they will be desperate for any solution. They're just not, they're procrastinating. But I would say over the next one to three years, if it doesn't rain and if the California drought continues to worsen. Either way, if it does rain, let's say they have a good year, we know that there's going to be drought, a big drought in the future, and they're just kicking the can down the road. So sooner or later, even if it is over 10 or 20 years, something's going to give. Okay, So food prices are going to triple to quadruple for, this is Americans. Uh, from what I understand, California produces 70% of our food. Okay, so 70% of the food, triple. Now, if you are going into ag right now, let's say you're a student and you want to become a farmer or you're just right out of high school and you want to become a farmer, look at all of the agriculture that California produces and start stealing it. What I mean by that is, let's start making Californians poor, right? Let's start taking their agriculture away from them. This is what I'm trying to encourage my fellow Texans to do. Like, <laughs> we can't depend on them because Californians are unreliable and completely incompetent and deluded. So let's go ahead and start stealing their ag away from them. Like, okay, so they produce almonds. Okay, let's get enough water in our state. Let's produce almonds. Okay, let's see. They produce, uh, what is it, avocados. Okay, let's steal that and let's start producing avocados. We get rich, they get poor. There you go, right? Um, so if the food price is triple to quadruple, going back to when I was working for the bank, what does that mean for consumers? Well, most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Okay, so if their food prices triple, ah, something they have to cut back on. What are they going to cut back on? Here's a bet, housing. Okay, plus Californians can't live in a state if there really is no water. Again, that's a big if, right? So what's going to happen to California real estate? <laughs> I feel sorry for all those foreign investors. Um, there's going to be a run on real estate. You might actually have Californians who are smart right now and are like, okay, I'm going to sell at the top and get out of here. And they're the ones who are banking it. But the rest of the Californians, it's, it's kind of like that, you know, musical chairs game where if they don't get out soon enough, they may, they may have to sell at a significant loss. So it's actually kind of funny. If this drought really is as bad as they're saying it is, you might see a run on real estate. But the funny thing is it's the first people who leave the state that are going to be rewarded the most. I worked for a guy one time who told me that he sold at the top of the California real estate bubble. He made a killing, but he was like, I warned everybody I knew, you better get out while you can, you know, get out and go somewhere else. And that's kind of what California real estate may turn into. I mean, if, if, again, if this drought is really serious, I think they're making it up. But if it's really serious, then yeah, you're going to see musical chairs with real estate pretty quickly because the music's about to stop. Okay. And then finally, there's going to be an electricity. I don't say finally. There's there's other things that will impact this, but um, these are the, the most obvious ones to me right now. Electricity crisis, because they heavily depend on hydro hydroelectric dams. I'm looking at their um, uh, their energy. 
uh, usage. And I would say that, you know, I'm not quite 10%, but about 8% is hydroelectricity, but it keeps dropping because apparently a low amount of water. Now, when I'm looking at this chart here, I'm looking at a graph right now, and I'm like, um, what can offset that? Well, maybe natural gas. You have wind and solar. Those are down too, huh? What do you know? Um, nuclear power, which nobody likes. But the idea is that you're going to have a potential electricity crisis, right? Because if, if these go offline, what happens? So then electricity companies will start charging more money, okay? Um, but either way, of course, if everybody moves away from it, then you can short those, you know, energy companies because they're not going to be making any money when there's no citizens there. So it'll be interesting to see what happens and how this plays. But these are some shorting opportunities. Now, again, California has had some opportunities to respond and they've been given solutions and I'll keep reaching out to them to give them more solutions. But the fact is there comes a point that it's like, okay, so y'all have been warned. It's kind of like the Federal Reserve before the housing bubble and they kept denying it. No, no, there's no housing bubble. Okay. If you won't listen, then I'll short. Okay, I'm not a bad guy for shorting. It's you're not paying attention. And you can't keep ignoring reality or solutions for that matter and expect that things are going to get better if they're going to get worse. So any hedge fund that was shorting real estate because the Fed kept ignoring the bubble, they're not bad guys, right? They were doing the right thing because the Fed was ignoring the bubble. Well, likewise, again, if California's offered solutions that work and that may take a year or two to build, but long-term are gonna be good for everyone, then it's time to start taking, I really think, take agriculture away from California. Let's start stealing all their agriculture. And then the other thing too as well is go ahead and bet against them because they're going to be wrong sooner or later if the drought is as bad as they're saying it is.